here with some perspective. A guy who's been around the block just a time or two is Patrick J. Buchanan. How are you, sir? I'm fine, Sean. I think it's too bad that an officer who has served his country as well as General Flynn did, and and when you, whatever your views about uh, General Flynn's particular views on foreign policy, it's sad to see someone after three weeks, when he's reached the pinnacle of his career, go out like this. But there's, I tell you, you were right in your introduction. Uh, they're going to go directly for the president on this one, and I'll tell you where they're going to go at him on. The question is going to be that, uh, did Mr. President, did you authorize General Flynn to talk to the Russian ambassador about the sanctions? Did he tell you about his conversation and what he told the ambassador about sanctions and the possibility you would take a different approach? And were you aware that when General Flynn uh, spoke uh, publicly that uh, and told the vice president that uh, he had not mentioned anything like that, were you aware that the general uh, was not telling the truth at the time or the full truth? Well, all those questions were answered by Sean Spicer today at the White House briefing. Every one of those questions. Mm -hmm. No, he said he did not know. He didn't know. And again, it came down to an issue of trust. The, the issue that they're raising here is that he didn't tell the vice president everything. And he apologized publicly to the president and vice president, said they accepted his apology on that. And according to the transcripts that were released, as, as it relates to the conversations, the, the conversation showed that, it, in fact, it was the Russians that brought it up to him. So now the question is, okay, why didn't he say that? I don't know the answer to it, but I think the, the broader question here is, you know, ha, you know, they're out for blood. They sure are, but my question is still on, on General Flynn. It's the suggestion, I didn't hear Spicer on uh, uh, the way you've described it. I heard the later part of it. The question is, what General Flynn freelancing on his own and giving some kind of assurance to the Russians about sanctions or how the president would react or what the president-elect, excuse me, would like the Russians to do, and uh, because that's a real assertion of authority that would be, that frankly, a, you know, a national security advisor should never take without the, this, this precise authorization or direction of the president. Well, they could have talked about it more broadly in meetings, Pat. I mean, think about it. I would, have, I would assume that the president didn't like or had probably had a disagreement that he verbalized many times in many meetings about his position. About well, here's, what I'm, here's what's going to happen, I think, Sean. You take McCain and those other folks, some of the folks that are really out, uh, have no enthusiasm for the president and who smell something here, and I think this is where they're going to go at him. And I agree well, I think you're I right, think but don't you, don't you think it's more... The goal is really there, uh, to get the president, certainly the media, and uh, and I, you know, there was a good piece in the Wall Street Journal today in the editorial, you know. What are these guys doing uh, uh, you know, overhearing, listening, and, and recording conversations of the national security advisor, etc. They claim they pick it up on the on the Russian ambassador alone. Well, I mean, I think that's a great question. But it would listen, knowing the president as well as I do, and having talked to him in the interim between that time when he was elected and he was putting his government together. Uh, I know he talked at length about all of the things that he would want to do. Now he didn't talk to me specifically about this. But, I, I mean, generally just reiterating that he wants to fulfill his promises. So, okay, well, let me say so, this, so hang please. on. Well, let me make my point. Sure. The, I would assume, Pat, that General Flynn heard his opinions about the, the issue of Russia and Obama and whether or not he agreed or disagreed with them. Well, now, I mean, let me say this. I think that if the president-elect held the view and even uh, told uh, General Flynn, um, look, you know, when you talk to the ambassador... Uh, you know, tell the ambassador not to overreact to this stuff. I have no problem with him doing that, quite frankly. Neither do I. The, you know, what they're saying is that this is a violation of the Logan Act, which bans unauthorized U.S. <laughs> citizens from communicating <laughs> with foreign government. Have been in the penitentiary for life. Yeah, you know. He goes to countries all over the world negotiating yeah. deals. And, and, tw and 20 minutes, you know, and 20 days later, he's about to be the national security advisor. But no, he, he can only do it the minute he's, 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 um, you know, I guess sworn in. I mean, to me, the whole thing is silly in a lot of ways. Well, but I mean, let me tell you a story. And when I, when Nixon was elected, I had contacts with the Russians, and I'm sure the guy was KGB. And it was in December, I believe, of '68, and he called me up and said he would like to see me. And I gave, you know, went to see the guy, wrote up a report on exactly what he asked, so you could find out what his questions were. But you informed 
uh, your guys. I, I didn't inform the government, but I did inform, uh, I believe it was Dr. Kissinger or his shop at the time. So I don't see any problem here with that or even with what Trump did. And, and my problem here is that, that it, frankly, do you think that, that the general fell on his sword here? But, but what's the reason for falling on his sword? That, in other words, the that, the, pre that the president be, told them to do it? to talk to the ambassador Maybe. and he's trying to protect that knowledge. Maybe. That, are you say, suggesting that the president did it, or are you suggesting that the I'm president told him to do it? The president-elect, look, and, and it would, I would have no problem with it if he had done this, which is to say, you know, when you're talking to the ambassador general, tell him, for heaven's sake, you guys should not overreact to these sanctions. I have no problem with him making that statement myself, and they talk about the Logan Act or whatever. And if the I, fact I, that I the Russians no... didn't throw out all our diplomats is a good thing. I totally, completely agree with you, because it would have precipitated a crisis, and if he was trying to calm the waters and say there's a, a new chief coming into town, then chief executive coming into town, then I don't see a problem. Right. Uh, you know, but I do think there's a broader issue here. Is If you look at you know Steve Miller, went on the Sunday shows, and, and how NBC has put him in dark black and white demonization and what they did to Bannon and the cover of Time Miller Magazine. Was, I thought Miller was excellent. I thought he was great this week, and I agree with you. He's got a lot of fire and vinegar. He's, he's intense. He reminds me of you, Pat. <laughs> you with a little bit more. I was even younger when I was I know. Younger. But the point is, I, I think what's happening here is broader. They've gone, they've avoided the political earthquake and the success that Donald Trump has had. And all they're doing is one by one trying to demonize and pick off all the guys around him, getting as much collateral damage to discredit him as possible. But with their ultimate goal is, you know, to use Eli Lake's column today, he called it the political assassination of Michael Flynn. But really, it's about Trump. Well, I think you're exactly right. First, I think they want to break Trump's agenda. And the things he campaigned on and what he promised he would do are going to be very difficult in this city, more difficult than even I thought they were going to be. And they're after him on those. And secondarily, they want to get rid of him personally. And there's folks in any way to embarrass or damage or drive him down in the polls so that he can't realize the agenda he ran on. I could not agree with you more on that. Isn't Sean. there a bigger problem? Well, we've got hopes, hopes invested here, and, uh, and, and we are concerned about what we're seeing. Aren't you as concerned as I am at who in the in the intelligence community leaked these phone calls? You know, that should be investigated by the I mean, that should be investigated internally by Pompeo at the uh, at the CIA and, and anybody at the FBI to find out who did this exactly and run that down. That is a horrendous scandal. Unbelievable. Because doesn't that suggest to you that that maybe Paul Sperry was right? Are there are there Obama, Hillary supporters within the intelligence community angry at Trump well, and want just, to undermine him? I would be him? astonished if there weren't. I mean, they, many of these agents, look, Donald Trump got 4% of the vote in Washington, D.C. Hang on one that's second. That's how friendly a city he's entered. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, stay right there. A couple more minutes with Pat Buchanan. All right, as we continue with Patrick J. Buchanan, our top story today, and that is the resignation of General Flynn as National Security Advisor, or he's been let go, depending on how you want to characterize it. I want to put together two different pieces that have come out. One has to do with Eli Lake's column, which is this is a political assassination and all the leaky from all the intelligence communities. And the second one is from Paul Sperry, where he wrote, how Obama's scheming to sabotage Trump's presidency. As you look at the big picture and the attack on every single person around the president and the president himself, at the while Washington ignores all of these major changes and success that he's had in just a few weeks, do you see what I see, and that is an orchestrated attempt by all the different, you know, draining the swamp components, which is the media component establishment, the Republican establishment, Democratic establishment, lobbying establishment. Do you see them converging together and partnering in this effort to smear, slander, besmirch, and literally erase a Trump presidency if they can? I certainly do. You know, when I went in the, into the White House with Nixon earlier on, I said, we're like the dust on a tabletop. I mean, you've got a few hundred or even when you get fully staffed, about a couple of thousand people in there, and you've got a mammoth bureaucracy, which is by and large totally hostile, built up in the Great Society and New Deal. And this, this bureaucracy, built up under Obama, is 
totally hostile to the agenda of Donald J. Trump because he threatens everything they believe in. Now, a real question here, Sean, is the we expelled all the Russian diplomats, President Obama did, threw them out of the country, and apparently they were upset or surprised that the Russians didn't retaliate, which is, I think, one of the motives for going after all this material. The question, interesting question, was this designed to sabotage the Trump foreign policy with regard to Russia before Trump got even into office? What is the motivation for these folks here? As, as you mentioned, who were I mean, all these people control, who are looking over and recording and taping what the general said and leaking it all out? I mean, what beneficent purpose do they have in mind in doing this if it's not to damage and destroy the Trump administration before it even gets into, war, into power? It's so, it's really, really chilling. You know, WikiLeaks actually came out with a, a theory today, and I don't disagree with them on this either because I think it's, you know, they may have sources that Sean Hannity and Pat Buchanan don't have, and they might be reading things that none of us know about, but they're suggesting on a pretty high level that, in fact, this was the intelligence community. Well, you know, it would not would not surprise me in the least, but again, we get back to, I don't know the, the problem here. I don't know exactly, to be honest, what exactly General Flynn did wrong, if, as you suggest, the ambassador's talking about this on the phone and a call from, from the general, and the general says something like, Fred, we hope you don't overreact mm -hmm. to this. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I don't find any of that, uh, that any... Well, what if it's, what if it's, deep, what if it's deeper than that? What if he said specifically, well, when we get in, we're going to fix this? Look, it's going to be a new day here in a month or so. We please don't overreact. Mm -hmm. That's a natural response. I don't understand, frankly, why the general, if he said that, didn't tell, you know, Pence this. I did say that. I did say that because... I don't see anything wrong with it, and frankly, the average individual would say, this is what Trump's been saying the whole campaign. When I get in, the policy toward Russia is going to change. We're going to try to work with them if we can. We're going to bring them into the battle yep. against ISIS. All right, Pat, I we got to roll. I problem with it. Pat Buchanan, always appreciate your insight. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, my friend.